Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris for this acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to easily paint this holiday farmhouse sign step by step from start to finish. So let's get started. <music> Today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create this beautiful holiday sign. These are the supplies used and they will be listed below. Starting out with the lettering only and I'm using tomato red and my number five radical round. This is a great little brush. It has a sharp point on it and it has a nice fat belly on it. So it's really easy to control and hit those edges to create those sharp lines. Now you will notice as I'm painting this that I'm always pulling the paint towards the outer edges and that will help eliminate any dripping over the sides. Another key element in creating a sign that's gonna look great is to be careful. Uh, make sure that the paint is uh, flowing smoothly on the brush. If not, you may need to add just a little bit of water to the brush, but if you have thick heavy paint when it dries, it's going to be thick and heavy. So just take your time, work slowly, uh, cover it well, have nice even strokes, and it's going to turn out so beautiful. A lot of times people think if a project's super simple to create, that going super fast We'll, we'll finish it and make it look fantastic. Often that's not the case. Just slow down a little bit. Be, pay attention to how you are applying the paint. Just put it on nice and smooth. Make sure it flows well. Have enough moisture in your brush. Simple, simple little tips to make it turn out just absolutely perfect.
I am using acrylic paint, which is absolutely wonderful to work with. Soap and water cleanup. It's just really a non-messy medium. However, when acrylic paint dries, it will shrink a little bit. So even though you think that you're covering it perfectly and smoothly and all the areas are covered, once it starts to dry, there may be some little areas that peek through that have been missed with paint. So it's always a good idea to put the first coat on a little bit thin, but make sure it's nice and smooth. And then it's easy to go back and just lay on a quick second coat with thinned paint. It will smooth it, even it out. So if there's any brush strokes that are not looking all that fantastic from the first application of paint with the second coat, it's going to just cover beautifully and look fantastic. Just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth and even and that you double check those edges to see if there's any areas where paint may be missing. And I'm just, you can see I'm quickly going over this. Again, I'm not going so fast that I lose control of the brush. Just want to make sure that it's nice and even. I think that's the key on getting that really professional look. Instead of hand painted, it's going to look like it was uh, manufactured that way. Just about to the end. And I did give it a quick dry between the first coat and the second coat. By the time you get down to the last E, the B at the beginning will probably be pretty much dry. Just make sure that you don't put wet on wet. Now I am going to avocado, which is going to be the green part. Just basically the same technique. I'm not pressing real hard on my brush. I'm using the tip of it to do the little thin areas. When I get into a wider section, I can press down a little bit more. The bristles kind of fan out so you get more coverage. You don't want to press so hard that you, you have the paint bristles dragging the side edges of the um, surface. That's when you get the, the edges that are a little bit blotchy and have paint on them. You can always clean them up, but if you're careful when you put it on the first time, you don't have to worry about that later. Just a light touch. If the paint brush starts to drag, pick up a little bit more water. One thing about acrylic paints, they're nice and opaque, most of them, and uh, they're, they're made to give a solid dark coverage. However, if you want them on, uh, want the paint to slide nice and, and loosely and freely, they are made to be thinned down with water. It's a very versatile paint. This is DecoArt brand, which is a wonderful paint to work with. Super easy. Because the green is a little bit darker in color, you'll probably notice that it seems to cover a little bit better. Pretty much all reds lean a little bit on the translucent side, so the application on red can be a little fussier than a lot of the other colors. Just going back and making sure that it's nice and even. And this is while it's still wet. If it's starting to dry, I'm not going to go back and mess with it, but while the paint is still wet, you can always go back and blend it in, smooth it out. If there's ridges in your paint when it's wet, there's going to be ridges in your paint when it's dry as well. I had gotten a little bit of red down on that scroll earlier, and I just took a damp paper towel and kind of wiped it off. It, you can see how well it covers. I wasn't worried about it showing through the paint. It's just so easy to apply paint with a nice brush. And if, if you're having trouble getting it on and 
having clean edges. Often if you're buying a less expensive brush, they're not made for tiny details. So that can also be a factor in how the paint application is um, created. Because if it's not a good brush and you struggle, it a lot of people think that they just can't paint. Often it's the tools that you're using. And there we have it all covered. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to the background. And this is an MDF surface. I did seal it with multi-surface sealer. Not necessary to do this. I always do it just as a precaution. I'm using an inch and a half wash brush and painting from the inside toward the edges so I don't get that run drip down over the edge. Using quite a bit of water in my brush so that the paint flows smoothly. This is warm white and I just want to make sure that I don't have stop and start marks in the middle of the plaque. I want it to look nice and smooth. Now because I want to get that farmhouse look, I'm not particularly concerned about the paint being super solid and opaque. And you can see there's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit darker. I'm working quickly so that the paint doesn't dry for a couple reasons. I want to make sure that I can blend these strokes together. Once it starts to dry where I stop and start, it's going to be super heavy. So I need to make sure that that paint stays moist enough. If you're worried about it drying before you have a chance to smooth it out, just get, I use the Distress Sprayer, <laughs> and it's a mouthful. I use the Distress Sprayer and just mist it a little bit with water, and that's just going to keep it more fluid and more workable. I did give it a good dry. Warm white is a little bit of an off white. It's not a bright white. I wanted this to have that farmhouse look. And so the second coat I'm using Snow White, which is a bright white. The reason I didn't use it for the first coat, because it's a bright white, it doesn't cover nearly as opaquely as warm white. So I found that putting the first base coat on with warm white, again, it's not solid and heavy, but just putting that first coat on with warm white and then washing over top with snow white. See, nice long brush strokes. It's gonna give that perfect farmhouse look. Now I didn't want to give a wood green look, but I still wanted it to be a little distressed. So I'm giving it a good dry with the hair dryer and sanding. If there's any areas that are too dark or heavy that you're not crazy about, a little bit of sandpaper. And this is probably, this is a 220 grit. You probably could go even with a 200 grit sandpaper, but keep it fine. And I'm just buffing over it just to kind of even it out, kind of sand those edges off a little bit. Love the contrast between the lettering, the colors, and the background. Using my splatter brush, and I've loaded it with a little bit of thinned charcoal gray, just splattering it over the surface to age it just a touch. And I'm using my distress sprayer with a little bit of a mist of water. What that does, it's going to diffuse those speckles a little bit. So instead of having solid, heavy polka dot dots, we're getting that, it, it just kind of blends out and diffuses softly. If there's any that are too strong and too dark, I just take a paper towel, lightly touch them, and it's going to pull off that heavy paint. Now I'm working on the letters. Same sandpaper, a 220 grit sandpaper. And you notice I'm holding each section as I sand it. This is not a fragile lettering, but if you're giving it a good sand with sandpaper, you can very easily break the lettering apart. So just keep a good grip on the areas that as you as you're sanding them, kind of doing the 
inside and outer edges of each of the letters and the scroll. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to lightly distress it. And when you're distressing anything, you're not looking for perfection. You just want to achieve that rustic effect. And I'm doing little sections at a time. I'm not going over the entire length of the lettering. Grab the E, do the top of the E, grab the B, do the top of the B, and then you can work down, work across, but work in little areas. You want it to be not perfect, but you want it to be evenly distressed. What I mean by that is you don't want it real heavy in one area and hardly any in another area. If this has been a weathered piece and it's distressed at the same time, it's, it's going to have a similar look all across. Just take a peek at it. If there's some areas that need to be sanded a little bit more, so just kind of even it up. And because the charcoal gray is not going to show up very well on the brighter colors, I am splattering this with a little bit of thinned Snow White. Now back to the background. I wanted this to be a little more distressed. I'm using a palette knife. You could also use a credit card, but I'm sliding the palette knife just through a real thin puddle of charcoal gray. Hardly have any paint at all on the back of the palette knife just very lightly sliding it over because I'm using a little bit of pressure and a little bit of paint. I can really control the amount of distress that I apply, that is applied to the plaque. Love this effect. It's such a simple way to add amazing texture. It just elevates it from looking homemade to just really professional very, very quickly. It's a perfect way to jazz up a plain background between distressing the edges with the palette knife and that little bit of splattering. This ages it and makes it so trendy. It's just absolutely wonderful. We'll give it a quick dry. Don't use much paint so it doesn't take long to dry. And that's another reason I like using just light layers of paint. You can go through the process very quickly. You're not waiting a long time between applications of paint. I was going to sand it, but I kind of like the way it looks. So you can sand it at any point. Check that out. Exactly what I wanted. I love the way it turned out. This is a close-up of the background so you can see how the splattering and how the palette knife work looks. Putting the distressed sanded lettering on there, I just think it turned out perfectly. If you would like to give this a try, the surface and all supplies are available at my website and are listed below. Be sure to check out my other videos. Please share like and subscribe. Remember to hit the bell to be notified when my next video is created. I hope you learned a few new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting life a little easier and a lot more fun. We'll see you next time on Create with Chris.